Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. I'm going to be talking about a rather special shotgun this time. It is not special because it is elite or expensive. Rather, it's special because a normal guy bought this for a very reasonable price and used it throughout his life for normal things. It is the kind of gun that I take a particular delight in because it's the kind of gun normal people bought and used all the time. Don't get me wrong, I like the fancy stuff. But in some ways this feels more real to me. What we have here is a Montgomery Ward Western Field Hercules 12-gauge double-barreled shotgun. These were made in various forms and flavors by the Stevens Company for Montgomery Wards from 1910 into the 1930s. Uh, I wasn't able to pin down the exact model of this. It's not mentioned anywhere. In fact, the only markings are, it says Hercules, proof tested 12 gauge, and there's a serial number, and it says Western Field on the remarkably still perfectly useful recoil pad. This was the uh, flinch pad. <laughs> <laughs> or the flinch avoider that was added in 1929. And um, it's a very simple gun. It has an extractor rather than an injector. It stays out, doesn't pop out, eject the shells and pop back in. It just gets them clear of the chamber so you can pull them out manually. It is chambered for three inch shells. So of course, two and a half and two and three quarter inch shells work just fine. And it's a very simple shotgun. The barrels are 31 inches in length. They came in 28 and 31. And it has double triggers. Now, this is interesting because the patent date, which is the other marking I forgot about, April 20th, 1915, indicates obviously this was made after that time. And that patent is for the mechanism, which instead of having internal hammers, has internal spring-powered strikers. It's kind of different, but it works just fine. Features of the shotgun are, of course, the top lever, which opens it, and an automatic safety that comes on when you activate the lever. Push this to the side, and the safety activates. So you have to remember to take it off before you fire. Front trigger shoots the right-hand barrel, rear trigger shoots the left-hand barrel. There is a simple bead front sight and no real sight in the back, which is pretty typical for guns of this sort. Now, this gun is special because it's not special, to my way of thinking. But it's also special because this came to me from my friend Alan and it belonged to his father, who presumably bought it from Montgomery Wards in the 1930s. Or someone did. And uh, when it came to me, it was not working. The barrels were off face. There was some rattling between the barrel and the breech. The um, ejector mechanism had a tendency to jam. And uh, the forestock, the forearm, was um, obviously a replacement. It was an unfinished light brown piece of walnut. So, and he gave it to me because it was just going to sit in his closet and do nothing. And he thought maybe I could do something with it. Well, what I did with it was I restored it to function. It was a case of conservation rather than restoration. I cleaned it up good and I determined what the issues were. Now, one issue was this little arm in the forearm uh, had no spring tension. Typically, they have kind of a little coil spring that makes them stick up like this. This one was missing, and so that was the first thing needed fixing. And uh, <laughs> I not only could not find the remains of the old spring, I couldn't find any evidence that there'd ever been one. So I delved into the bin of random springs and found a coil spring, which you may or may not be able to see in there, to push on the back of the lever. And that holds it in position and works just fine. Makes it very easy 
to reattach the forearm. The other thing was that there's a lever under here that would pull past its stop when you open the shotgun and subsequently you couldn't close it because it was past the stop. So I determined that the reason for this was that the spring that's supposed to make it poke out far enough had broken and was no longer effective. So back into the bag of random springs and I cut a, found a piece that fit, cut it to length, inserted it, and now it works pretty well. Um, <clears throat> I got the shotgun back on face by making some alterations and tuning up of the lug. And uh, so everything is now ship shape. The replacement forearm, which was in just, like I said, light colored raw walnut, um, I was able to match the color of the stock and refinish it in that color with many coats of lacquer, so that it pretty well matches now. Uh, my friend Ben commented that you couldn't really tell anything had been done, it just looks like it's supposed to, which was the goal. Um, <laughs> interestingly, after pouring over my selection of things to color wood, uh, I didn't have a stain that was appropriate or that would achieve the desired effect, and I wound up using a Phoebing's oil-based leather dye of a particular color, and um, it really came out good, a good match. So I'm very happy with this. So, having done all of the mild repairs and tuning up, it was time to take the gun out and test it. And I took it over to my friend's property this morning, my friend Ben. Thank you for the use of your property, Ben. And uh, we tested it. Let's have a look at how that went. Okay, we're out here at my friend Ben's place to do a little shooting with the Hercules 12 gauge. And we're at about 35 yards and we're going to pattern this with a couple different kinds of shot. They're different enough that it will be pretty obvious which one is which. And then we're gonna fire a couple of low pressure slugs to see how close the barrels are at this range. So let's get to it. To start with, we're gonna try a couple of RST seven and a half inch shot. And these are specially formulated for firing in antiques. So let's see how we do. All right, I have an orange dot on the target. Safety's off. That's quite mild. So, let's go have a look at the target. Okay, they're a little hard to see, but you've got a pattern about this big, pretty nice distribution, and you can see if this were any sort of waterfowl or bird, uh, they would be well peppered by those. So that's pretty good. So, let's try a different load. So the RST shells worked out really well. Now we're going to try some Fiocchi low recoil buckshot. And I think we're gonna give it both barrels this time, but not at once because I'm not that into pain. So let's give this a try. Safety off. And note that this is an extractor rather than an ejector, and that's fine. Okay, so as you can see, two rounds with nine projectiles each. Um, we've got a lot of spread, and it's fairly uneven, but with a low shot count, that's not a great surprise. But we do have four right in or on the bullseye. And so I think maybe this is a shorter range proposition uh, maybe we'll try it a little later at 25 yards and see how that affects things. So now we're going to try a couple slugs. And since we're just checking it out and I'm not a masochist, we're going to use one inch mini slugs. 
just to save wear and tear on my shoulder and the gun. If I decide to go after deer with this, I will use the hunting slugs under more formal circumstances and figure out exactly where they're hitting. But for this test, this will be fine. So, loaded, safety off. There's one. Not bad at all. Let's go have a look. Okay, so we hit a little low. No great surprise, I'm just using a bead front sight. And this one is a bit off, more than I might expect, but that, that could very easily be me. But I am satisfied that the barrels are <laughs> close enough. So let's do a couple more of those and see if I can't aim a little better. So now we're at approximately 20 yards. Let's see what the Fiocchi low recoil does at 20 yards. Safety off. Fresh cardboard down range. And we'll go down and have a look. So as you can see, at 20 yards, we have a much tighter pattern. We've got five hits in the bullseye. And the rest are all close enough that they would do very bad things. So, uh, yeah, I would say the Fiocchi is definitely a short-range load. So, very interesting. So, pretty happy with the results, especially the bird shot. That was really quite good. You know, it's closing in on a century old, but old girl can still do the job. Speaking of doing a job, the rain looks like it's about to start doing its job, so going to wrap up the shooting section of this video and move on to other things. Well, there's no getting around that a 12 gauge shotgun, double barrel shotgun with 31 inch barrels is going to be heavy. And this weighs about 10 pounds. But shooting relatively mild 12 gauge loads was a dawdle. I mean, it was just very pleasant to shoot with the low powered loads I used. Now, about antique shotguns and shotgun shells. There is more than enough metal in this chamber to accept any reasonable modern shotgun ammunition. The problem is the metallurgy elsewhere in the gun is not really up to modern standards. Now, I don't worry about pressure in the barrels and in the chambers. The enemy of antique shotguns seems to be, to me, recoil. And recoil is what affects the relatively soft materials and causes accelerated wear. So my intention with this is to always use loads of moderate to low power. And as you saw, um, with the RST shotgun slugs, or sh excuse me, birdshot shells, um, they're a light charge, they're relatively low velocity, but they achieve a very good pattern. Uh, I'd hazard to say that no creature that you could reasonably shoot bird shot at was going to survive getting shot at at 35 yards with this gun. And uh, you have the buck shot, a bit more problematic, but again, that's a low projectile count, light recoil load. Uh, the slugs, slugs didn't work out to my satisfaction. I'm going to test it with some different slugs and see if I can't produce better accuracy than that. Because at 35 yards, I didn't really feel that that was adequate. I like, I like a bit more precision than that. So, but that could just be a matter of practice. I am not used to handling guns of quite this length and weight. Not anymore, anyway. 
So all in all, this is a great old shotgun. It's working well. It's very pleasant to shoot and it hits, you know, with, with pattern, it puts a pattern of bird shot exactly where I want it to go. And it's a big enough pattern, but maintains enough density to be extremely useful against the sort of things one should fire bird shot at. And it is, it's a very plain gun. There's no checkering, there's no end caps, there's no elaboration, there's no clever little details. It's just a solid, functional, good old shotgun. And it is so good that if my young friend Arthur manages to drag my sorry ass out for waterfowl this year, this is going to be my weapon of choice. I really like the way it shoots. I'll probably get some bismuth shot because I don't want to hazard steel in these old barrels. Um, you can't fire lead at waterfowl. The standard option for modern shotguns is steel, but I have seen evidence of it grooving the barrels in older shotguns like this. So it seems like bismuth is the way to go. But uh, thank you very much, Alan. Um, after I reconditioned the shotgun and got it all back in order, I offered it back to him, but Alan said, ah, I could never hit anything with it. And, you know, my old man took it out for waterfowl, so do the same. And it's all good. So thank you very much, Alan. Um, I treasure the shotgun, not just for what it is and its history, but as a present from a friend. So great old gun, and I'm glad it's got restored to a new life and maybe back in use for the purposes which it was intended. So like to shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Your support helps more than you know. I also like to thank channel benefactors like Alan, who've contributed ammo, loaned guns to shoot, given the channel guns to shoot, uh, and helped in more ways than I can elucidate and really help make this channel work. There's a link in the description below to AmmoSquared.com. This is an ammunition subscription service where I and another and a number of other YouTubers uh, get our test ammo for various tests. There's a link in the description below. As I said, if you follow it and decide it's for you and sign up, I'll get a little extra ammo in my account, which helps the channel. So that's it for this time. Hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.